everyone. Welcome to 15 Minutes in the Forest. I'm Jennifer Gagdon with the Forest Landowner Education Program at Virginia Tech. And today I am joining you from Struble's Creek uh, near the Virginia Tech campus in Blacksburg, Virginia. And today I have a special guest with me, Daniel Smith, and he's a PhD student. And he's gonna be talking about a stream restoration project that took place on the creek back in 2009. Hello everyone, my name is Daniel Smith. I'm a PhD candidate in the Biological Systems Engineering Department here at Virginia Tech. Um, and right now we are standing on uh, the location of the Stream Lab, which is, which Stream Lab stands for the Stream Research Education and Management Laboratory, or Stream Lab. And what I wanna talk about today is, you know, give a brief overview of what the Stream Lab is, what happened, here back in 2009 slash 2010. Why is important and kind of give some big picture ideas for something that landowners and other uh, people that live near to sh near streams uh, can take home with them as well. Uh, so in some detail, the stream lab is along Struble's Creek um, and it's uh, a few uh, very close to uh, Virginia Tech, Virginia Tech's campus. So the watershed of Struble's Creek, of this section of Struble's Creek, encompasses all of the Virginia Tech campus and most of the town of Blacksburg as well. So very uh, highly urbanized uh, section of Struble's Creek. So all that water that hits the pavement in the town of Blacksburg or hits the pavement in Virginia, on Virginia Tech's campus will collect along in Struble's Creek and flow into the section as well. And another thing to note is that throughout the town of Blacksburg and throughout Virginia Tech, parts of Struble Creek is buried. So that, so Struble, this section being in a highly urbanized area, uh, collecting all that runoff from, from the town of Blacksburg, from Virginia Tech, leads to, contributes to a lot of the problems that we saw here in the past, or that the faculty saw here in the past, and led up to what happened in 2009, 2010, which was a stream restoration project along this section, which is about 1.3 mile section of Struble's Creek, uh, which this land is owned by the Virginia Tech Foundation. And this area uh, is called the, the Heath Farm. So what happened here, the, before the restoration happened, this uh, Struble's Creek was uh, identified as an impaired stream. So what that means in, in this case is it was identified identified as impaired for benthic macroinvertebrates or the little critters or the organism, organisms that live at the bottom of the stream. And it was considered impaired due to a variety of different reasons, but one reason in particular that I'll talk about a lot today was due to uh, sedimentation. So sediment coming from construction, uh, from the watershed, so from Virginia Tech and Blacksburg, and sediment from the stream bank itself, itself. So a lot of stream bank erosion issues, and a lot you you get a lot of issues for a variety of different reasons as well. But two in particular were one, there were cattle up until 2009, cattle that were all along this farm, so grazing along the stream bank and trampling on the stream bank and causing it to destabilize and fall into the stream itself. And also this stream being on a farm was also uh, straightened or channelized in the past as well. And so those problems contribute to the stream bank instability that was saw, that was seen there, um, contribute to the stream bank erosion, the excessive stream bank erosion that we saw, and combine that with the large amount of uh, runoff of, of water coming from the urbanized area, you had a really what we call flashy stream. So you had a lot of water coming in really fast. Uh, during a storm event, the water level of this of struggles would rise really rapidly and cause a lot of stream bank instability or stream bank erosion problems. So that's when some faculty members here at Virginia Tech came in and said, we got some funding um, from, we uh, got some funding and we're able to design and implement a design, a stream bank restoration plan here. And rest stream bank, rest, our stream restoration uh, can mean a lot of different things or could look like a lot of different things depending on the site and the people that are involved in the goal of what's going on in that area. 
But for here, it happened in three section, in sections, and it mainly focused on uh, reducing sediment loading or sediment from the stream bank itself. The restoration here at Struble's, uh, this section of Struble's was done in three parts. So this first part is what we're in now. Uh, it goes on for about a third of the, the way throughout this 1.3 mile section of Struble's that we, that we have here in the stream lab. And here, all they did was remove the cattle. So no planting, uh, no reshaping the bank, nothing. They just removed the cattle um, and fenced the cattle back off and then let this stream grow uh, the way it has been since two, 2009, 2010. As we look at the stream bank here, if I were to show you an old picture of what the stream used to look like compared to what it looks like now, you will see a very a lot of similarities. For one, we still have these fairly steep banks. So I'm gonna walk over to one so you can get a reference. And it comes up right about my you know, lower chest level. And I'm about five, five foot seven inches, so you can can uh, compare it that way. And so you still have a fairly steep, steep bank. Uh, if you also look at the bank, it seems to be bulging inwards. So up here in the center, you see this kind of bulged in, so indicating you're still getting this active erosion at the, on this bank. Um, even though you have this vegetation growing, the roots are seem to be stuck here at the, the top portion, which is you typically have of grasses on a stream bank and don't really penetrate super deep down into the bank. Um, so while the vegetation did regrow here compared to when there was cattle here grazing and moving in the stream bank, we only had a lot of grasses growing. They didn't really get that many trees or shrubs or other variety of plants growing. Just removing the cattle for this section of Struba's Creek alone did not change how the stream bank was eroding, eroding compared to the years prior. Because we're still seeing active erosion, we're still seeing evidence of active erosion, and we're still seeing uh, this lack of uh, growing of a uh, different variety of native vegetation, at least on the side that the cattle was removed. On. So this, this goes to one idea that I really wanted to get across in this video was, no, before you even start a restoration project, before you dive in to say, I'm having stream bank stability issues, let me fix it now, you really have to understand what is causing that erosion in your stream bank. So for for example, like I talked about earlier, this section of Struvus Creek is fed from water from the town of Blacksburg, most of the town of Blacksburg, and from Virginia Tech campus. So highly urbanized, which causes you know, sedimentation from that from those locations, but it also causes uh, a lot of runoff. So when the when it rains, like some of the intense storms we got this summer, when it rains, you get a very flashy stream in a sense where the water is moving really fast and it rises really fast uh, because it's not not having time to kind of infiltrate in natural soil and just running off of pavement through the urbanized watershed. So we're just removing the cattle did not achieve the goal of just reducing, uh, of reducing stream bank erodibility. Now it may work in other areas, depending on the cause, some some area, some farmland, some, own, some woodland owners do see great success with just removing the cattle, fencing it off, and allowing the natural vegetation to kind of regrow and reshape. But again, the cause of their erosion, the cause of their stream bank instability may be different. And so I just want to, you know, kind of, really stress on the point is you want to identify that cause just like when you go to a doctor's office you want them to identify what's wrong with you before they give you medicine i want you and everyone uh to really consider you know what is causing your erosion first in terms of stream bank erosion what is it causing it first before you jump in and try to fix the problem now we're here in section two of the stream lab or of the section two of the restora restoration that happened on this section of Struber's Creek. And so if you look over here, this is one of the sampling bridges that was set up back when, the, uh, right after the restoration happened uh, to do things like water quality sampling, sampling to take videos of different uh, flow events, storm events that happened here, 
Um, here on the site, we also have uh, a weather station um, and a variety of other equipment that uh, help the, the, the team, the people that do, are doing restoration or doing research at this site, um, understand uh, what is going on over the long term. So again, the restoration happened back in 2009, 2010. And so it's now been uh, over, over 10 years where we have a lot of data and a lot of information about three very different restorations that happen in one site, in one location. And so here in section two, they also removed the cattle, just like we saw in, or told you about in section one, but they also did two other things. They reshaped the bank. So what I mean by that is they came in with a lot of volunteers and contractors and a design plan and took uh, moves and reshaped the, the uh, stream banks back so they're at a lower slope. So we saw earlier that the, the, the stream bank came, you know, right up to about here, right up to my chest level. But here, uh, at least in the initial portion, it's uh, at a lower, uh, lower elevation. So they came back and sloped it back. So that way the banks weren't as steep. And then the third thing is they planted uh, a ton of vegetation. Uh, right after the, the restoration, right after the reshaping of the bank, but also, over the last few years, they've come in and planted, with, again, a lot of volunteers, uh, a ton of uh, native grasses, native trees, native shrubs, uh, as densely packed as they could get it, uh, but also a variety of different types compared to what we saw in section one. Because again, you can barely even see the, the soil on the stream bank here. It's underneath, it's underneath some of these, these, uh, uh, grasses some of these shrubs uh, but again they're also at a lower elevation and here in terms of reducing stream bank erosion or in terms of increasing uh, stream bank stability uh, it seems to be uh, working out as design here I want to highlight um, the constraints you have for the work you can do so in that sense uh, like I mentioned earlier this took uh, a design plan by faculty here at BSE. It took a lot of volunteers, so from students to faculty, et cetera, and it took some work from contractors to come out here and actually reshape the bank. And same thing for the third section. So that, that leads to, you know, what type of funding do you have? Um, are, and what type of funding are you willing to commit to a project in, in your land at your site? Um, how much time do you have for maintenance? So if you're gonna plant native, native vegetation, but you have invasive species in your area, how much time do you have to maintain the area so those invasives don't outcompete or, uh, or, or invade, in a sense, your, your stream bake and outcompete your native species? Here we are, we are now in the, the third section of the restoration that happened here, uh, along Struble's Creek, uh, within the stream lab that I described earlier. And here they did exactly the same thing as we saw in section two. They removed the cattle, just like everywhere. They reshaped the bank, just like in section two. But here they also added something called an inset uh, flood, flood plain. They created a lower flood plain next to the stream uh, to allow, uh, during a storm event, to allow uh, more area for the water to slow down deposit any fine, uh, very fine, so you think your silt in your clay sediment, allow that to deposit on the floodplain um, uh, along this section of the stream. So that was the, the third thing and last thing they did for the restoration here along Struber's Creek and the stream lab. And again, they also, in both the, in, in that inset floodplain and along this section, they also planted a bunch of native vegetation. Uh, and so here, even more so compared to section two, we see a, a lot more growth of different trees, different shrubs. Um, in this section, um, at least in this part of the section that we're in right now, compared to what we saw in section two. And there could be a variety of different uh, reasons uh, for that itself. Um, but it could, uh, a lot of it, and something to mention here that it could come down to you at your site as well, is just um, the luck of the draw for the whether those plants will survive or not. 
when it comes to stream restoration and it comes to planting uh, species, planting vegetation in particular, is you want to plant a lot of them and densely pack them along the stream. So identifying the cause is a, a major thing to remember, a major, major uh, thing to consider, but also understanding the constraints you have to work with. How much land do you have to work with? How much funding do you have to actually get something done? And how much time do you have to commit to uh, uh, achieving your goal? Specifically, in this case, stream bank erosion reduction. Uh, but you may have other goals that you come up with uh, later on that you want to achieve. As well. well, thank you for spending 15 minutes in the Creekside Forest with us. And thank you, Daniel, for taking time to talk to us about stream bank uh, stabilization projects. Good to have you here. So join us all next week again for another 15 minutes in the forest at 1215. Have a great weekend.